Good afternoon everyone, this is Shayun Chakraborty, founder director WDA, finalist MTV Dropout Private Limited and I've recently founded a company called Brandbull which is headquartered in Singapore and uh, we have our offices in New York, youngest to win the Times Icon of the Year, wagera, wagera, wagera. just leave that, leave me. Uh, first of all, congratulations to TEDx HIT Kolkata for putting up this great show. I want you guys to clap for yourselves, like this is from me, please, please give the roundest Biggest round of applause for yourself for putting up this amazing show after six months. And uh, before I start, I want to put 30 seconds of gratitude, immense gratitude. I fold my hands and I bow down and I thank each one of the COVID fighters, the doctors, the press, the media, everyone who has been carrying the vaccine for us. Because of you, we are safe. Because of you, the lights are on. Because of you, uh, we are on stage. And because of you, we are safe. Thank you so much. If ever in life we get to return this favor, We'll give it with full interest. Thank you so much. Ah, when this topic came to me, uh, what is the difference between a businessman and an entrepreneur? I was like 90% of the people in India or in Calcutta or in especially in West Bengal thinks they are both basically the same thing. Uh, Poisha Kamano is Babsha and whatever the person who earns and earns something at a, and keeping a profit is a businessman and entrepreneur is the same thing. Even when I started to think this, and when this topic came to me, I started to jot down the points. And I saw this is, these are two same things with very distinctive features and striking differences. And I started to know that what is actually the difference. When I actually started seeing and jotting down the differences, something struck me really hard. I didn't even realize that me being an entrepreneur was living for the last 25 years with a businessman who has been doing business for the last 30 years. I observed my father for you know a month or so and I said that okay this is fun this is fun because they in, though these two things are very similar to each other there are three to four striking differences that lashes these two things into two different hubs this is the same reason why in, you know we all have MBA degrees where you can be a businessman you you have you know commerce you have uh, uh, you have or you already have uh, degrees which actually makes you a businessman then why did the government implement EDCs in every schools and colleges why entrepreneurship has been the you know kingmaker of the year why that you know the image of heroes are changing every single day why fortune has our Forbes have a bigger sellout than any film fair magazine I started to realize the country was changing. The heroes were changing. It was not just any Bollywood stars dancing on an item number. It was a founder who just closed their Series A and a 25, 26 year old kid is making millions without even a college degree. So the first striking difference that strike me between a businessman and an entrepreneur starts with the head, the mindset. On the right side of the screen, which you can see, a businessman is extremely profit driven. Look, let's uh, sir said about uh, agriculture, so I'll stick to a vegetable market and put this example as fresh as possible and as relatable as possible for you guys. If a person who's a vegetable seller, who's a lemon seller, if this person can buy three lemons for 10 rupees and sells it at 15 rupees, he is very happy. He is a businessman, but he is not an entrepreneur. In a market where he, he gets that you know, I am selling lemon today for 10 rupees. I'm buying a lemon for 10 rupees and I'm selling for 15 rupees. There is a 5 rupees profit. If I get apples tomorrow and I can buy that same apple at 5 rupees and sell it at 15 rupees, okay, the apple has a bigger profit, I'll move to apple. They shift their market, they shift their things just due to profit. And this is nothing wrong. First of all, I'll clear this out. These differences are extremely special and nicer in their own ways. By this, I do not mean to intend to hurt any businessman or glorify any entrepreneur but it is just differences that strike me on the same hand entrepreneurs the rare breed of people like us the rebels who didn't sleep at night who fought with our parents and said that i don't want a college degree i don't want to study i want to create my own company where people from iim and iits will come and work for me and with me we keep customers first we think of a product or a service that may not give me profit on day one of business, may not give me profit on year three of business, but will change the world on fifth year of the world. The people who actually thought, you know, in, in, in 1994, a person was kicked out of his school, was kicked out of his college, and he didn't think that he was worth it. He started doing something and people said, oh, wow, you're doing this. This is interesting. We cannot pay you today, 
but we can definitely pay you. This is helping us. This is solving our real life problems. This is actually making our lives better. And if you continue doing this every single year, I think you will be big. The thing which I'm talking about back in 1994 is what we call the internet today. And the person whom I'm talking about is Jack Ma, the founder of the Alibaba group. You know, an entrepreneur is driven by vision. They think they see a future that no one has seen. In a small dorm of Harvard University, one random guy said that I'm going to connect the world together. This also brings me back to my first TEDx talk where I started the slide with a why. The why is so strong for the entrepreneurs. It is just not profit, but it is the why. Why should I start this? Where people say, why are you doing this? What is the need of this? People say, Elon Musk, you can easily stick to Tesla. Why are you going for another thing that can change the world and bring, you know, pe take people to space? He said, you say, why should I do it? I ask, why shouldn't I do it? Because this is going to change the fate of the world. The second thing. So getting back to the same person who's selling lemons. Getting back to the same person who's selling lemons. Part of the market and the market leader. Businessmen are part of the market. You know Chadni Chowk has huge amount of electronic sellers. You know Kole Market has huge amount of vegetable sellers. You are not the market leader. You know that there will be people in the morning coming to you and talking to you and getting... You already have a tried and tested model that is working out. There is no such risk. You don't have to convince someone, just, sir, I have made an app that can book vegetables and that can deliver to your place. It is directly linked to your wallet. You can track the driver. It can deliver to you. You can buy one, get one. You can have all the offers. People are not ready. People are very stagnant about what they have been doing. These, the, the same lemon seller can, you know, maximum they, he can include two, three potatoes in his list and he can be a bigger vegetable seller. But on the same, on the other hand, entrepreneurs get a first mover's advantage. When everyone in Calcutta was making restaurants, when everyone in Calcutta was making restaurants, we thought we're going to democratize fine dining. I thought when people would come in, they don't even have to look at the menu card. We don't have a menu card today. Whatever you buy from us is at 149. I thought let's solve a problem. Let's, let's make middle class enjoy what they see on social media. And that's what made us what we are today. But the one thing, we become the market leaders. People are very stagnant and they're very static about what they use and what they are. They, 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 they give their loyalty. People are not your ex-boyfriends and ex-girlfriends. They are loyal to what they use. But the point is, this brings me to the third and one of the most striking differences. The risk factor. When you enter a market, you already know that you are here to buy vegetables. Doesn't matter. All you got to do as a businessman is to keep your quality intact. Super fresh vegetables and you know that there are people buying it. All you got to say is, Dada, apna jamata khub sundor. You're looking really good. Achha, apni duta ka kom de na hai. It's your PR and it's your fresh vegetable that sells you and gets your profit at the end of the day. You do not have to convince anyone coming into the market because you already know people who are in the market are here to buy vegetables. Risks are lesser when you are a businessman because you're working in a tried and tested out model. It comes down from generation after generation. Chadni Chok will be Chadni Chok. Bara Bazaar will have Gaddis year after year, year after year, and year after year. But the difference is, when I come here, you know, if you own five taxis, five yellow taxis in Calcutta, you are a businessman. At the end of the day, you are nurturing some profit. You are gaining some profit. But it is very tough to, you know, make people understand and realize, that, sir, there is a play store. You can go there, you can book your own cab. There is no refusal. You have an OTP. It's connected to your e-wallet. It detects your location. It drops you at. And people are like, I'm at the yellow taxi. I'll get this yellow taxi. Why do I need to do this? They'll only start believing you when they face the problem that you saw three years back. And five customers will say, let's give this app a try. Five will bring 10. 10 will bring 50. 50 will bring 500. 500 will bring 10 lakhs. And you become a sensation. But... These are the success stories. The day one such app was formed, which takes you from one place to other via cab, even 15 such apps have also closed because they couldn't convince their customers that yes, we are also solving a real life problem. Risks are there. If I get back to my own life, there were nights where I didn't sleep. There were nights when I didn't talk to my parents because I wanted to do this so bad. And in my family, no one has ever been into the FNB industry. Uh, it's been three years. 
We started from 2,500 rupees. Now we are valued at some million. I have been one of the youngest to win the Times Icon of the Year for hospitality, a non-actor, non-model, because I believed on day one a vision. I saw 2020, 21, 22, back in 2016, when people were like, next chomashe ki could be. I was like, I'm not even thinking about six months. I'm thinking about six years down the line. I'm not thinking about profit today because I want to solve a problem. A very basic problem that I have been facing for years and people were like, it might happen, might not happen. I said, I know this will happen. It, you know, as Job said, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. Everything makes sense when you look backward. But these are the very basic differences. That differences between an entrepreneur and a businessman. I guess most of you have got it. And I was like, okay, these are the basic differences which you'll get in the internet. But let me talk to you about the market. The biggest MBA school of this world, the market. It teaches you more than your class teachers. It, it doesn't hold you a degree. It holds you back an experience. They're gonna, that, that's going to help you to all the entrepreneurs watching me from that side of the screen or sitting over here. Market teaches you more than your schools. Your prizes teaches you more than your school teachers. In an MBA class, when I go to teach MBA students, I'm the only non-MBA. Do you get that? Just like the education, this will be very harsh. The statement which I'm going to make will be very harsh and I take complete responsibility of that. I think in the next 50 years, businessmen that the traditional ways by which they are doing business will be worn out. Will be worn out and it will be taken by a group of crazy people who see future much before they come. They're going to digitalize that thing. It's not going to be heroes. It's not going to be Bollywood stars. It is going to be entrepreneurs. That is going to shape the future of tomorrow. And this brings me to my most important yet the last slide. Innovation. They would stick to their traditional ways of business. Sitting down, maintain a, maintaining a khata which they call khata. You know, garnering customers from Rasta Dege. And people will be like, Dadak, Nien Nien. Please buy it. Edike Ashun, please come here. Please buy it. No. These people are problem solvers. They do not start a business to start a business. They start a business where they see a gap, an opportunity. Where people say that, ah, this is bad, man. I wish this could have changed. There is a person who's sitting right next to you who has already started calculating his funding, who has already started calculating his first bootcamp fund, and he's like, okay. You, start, you continue complaining, I'm going to solve this. And I'm going to solve it in such a way that the world will know that there is a new product coming in. It might take them a lot of time creating the market. Good things take time. If you want to make Maggie, then it takes two minutes. If you want to make a goddamn amazing biryani, it takes four hours. So decide what you're going to make, a Maggie or a biryani. Innovation, digitalization, and dreams. Courage. It takes courage to go out of the door. You know, I, my father is one of the most successful businessmen in my state, which we have. I had an easy way sitting down. I can vouch today at this point of time when I received my income tax letter thanking the income tax department, thanking for paying so much tax. I felt happy because this generation is not fighting for money. This generation is not fighting for revenue. This generation is not fighting for the profits or their pocket money. This generation is fighting for identity. What will I be called when I am not in the room? What will I be called when there is someone who talks bad about me and the other three person will be like, no, I know him. He is the future over here. He is shaping up Calcutta. This generation is fighting for identity. And this entrepreneurship makes you identical from a bunch of people. This is one of the most important quotes that I saw. All entrepreneurs are businessmen. We make profits. We make good amount of money which help us to buy Cars, buildings, whichever your dream is, get dream destinations, give, give employment to people, change life, touch millions of lives. But every businessman won't be an entrepreneur. But, 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 this is a hopeful future. India is changing. Last day, my father came to me and said, Shayan, I need to talk to you. I was like, yeah, bolo na, ki hoche. He was like, I need a website for my company. After 25 years of our company, this person says that I need a website. I knew that India was changing. I knew that the heroes were changing. I knew we didn't have to change. The people who should have changed are changing. The businessmen are trying to be entrepreneurs. Ladies and gentlemen, people who want to be entrepreneurs, let me, very, let me tell you the most true thing ever. This is going to be tough. This is going to be, this is going to hurt more than a breakup. This is going to hurt. This is, this is going to, this is going to tear you apart. But just know that this stage is waiting for you. 
this stage, these people are waiting for you to hear your story. Live each moment of your pain. Live each moment of your dust. Go out in the market. Get slapped. Get slanged. Die. Live. And come out victorious. Because entrepreneurs are not made. They are born. Thank you so much.